war. You know? Exactly. Look at Chicago. Okay. I'm sorry. I, and I know that, you know, this is a national show and I shouldn't harp on Chicago. I get it. I get it. But I'm, I'm from Chicago. I'm from the South side of Chicago, an Irish Catholic from the South side of Chicago. Diagram that sentence. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I mean, if you, let me just say this. If you are an, an English professor or Sigmund Freud, <laughs> they are trying to just diagram that sentence. Irish Catholic South side of Chicago. That will break you. Do you understand? <laughs> diagram it. You know, I love people from Ireland. I really, really do. You know what I mean? And I know that when I meet somebody from Ireland, I'll say to them, you know, hey, I'm Irish. And they're like, ha, 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 you're Irish, right? You know, I'm an Irish Catholic from the South Side of Chicago. Or as they say, as they say not Irish, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I get it. I get it. But guess what? How hard is it to be Irish in Ireland? Huh? Try being Irish on the South Side of Chicago for one day. One day! Irish Catholic, South Side of Chicago. Diagram that sentence. <laughs> Spend the rest of your life doing it. I'm sorry, but I, I'm telling you right now, the city of Chicago is lost. And I've been saying that to national conservative leaders for decades now. And you know what they you know what they say to me? To the man. To the man. You know what they say to me? Chicago gets what it deserves. Chicago gets what it deserves. That's what they say. The problem is that by losing Chicago, we the United States of America ended up with President Barack Obama. That is that was the consequence of giving up Chicago was you had a, a, a senator named Barack Obama from the south side of Chicago, a, a state senator who became a U.S. senator. And then two years later, became president of the United States for the last eight years. Open the borders. Open the borders of Europe, by the way. Make no mistake about it. The, the Obama administration was all about. Creating chaos in the Middle East and a refugee crisis that has now destroyed Europe. Where do you think you're going to, Where you know, I remember uh, uh, Ronald Reagan's great rendezvous with destiny speech where uh, he said that there was some, you know, refugee from, from Cuba, right. Uh, who was talking about, uh, was, was talking about how wonderful it was to have, to be free, to have freedom in America. And, and uh, a friend of Ronald Reagan said, well, gee, we don't realize how good we have it. And the Cuban refugee, this was obviously back in the whatever, the 60s, right, said, how good you have it. You, I had somebody somewhere to flee to. Where will you flee to if the United States of America falls? And think about it. Where, where on planet Earth? Can freedom-loving Americans flee to if the United States of America falls? Where? Name a country. London. London? London is... Uh, London has fallen. Berlin? Berlin has fallen. Rome? Rome has fallen. Where? Where? If, if America falls, where will American citizens, my fellow citizens, flee to? Name a city in, Amer in the world. Athens, Athens has fallen. Where, where do you think you're go? Where do you think you're going to go? We have to maintain our borders. We have to say we have to maintain our sovereignty or what passes as sovereignty, right? And we have to maintain our freedoms right here in America. I'm sorry, my fellow citizens. Chicago has fallen. Chicago's fallen. If you are a cartographer. Pull out your, pull up your map and put an X through the city of Chicago. It's gone. Do you understand? Yes. <clears throat> so, so I'm telling my fellow, you know, my, I'm, I'm, you know, please, that this is, uh, 
2020 is is 100 for real. This is for real right now. If we lose the White House in 2020, there will never be another free or fair election in the United States of America. Period. That will be game over in our lifetime. This isn't something that, oh, gee, you know, we really want to maintain America for future generations. Forget it. This is your generation. Do you understand? And by the way, how's the American dream working for you right now? Is your house bigger than your parents' house? No, because you're living at your parents' house. Right? Yes, indeed. What are you talking about? 2020 is... 2020 is... we the, the Citizen Kelly Show is gearing up for 2020. Make no mistake about it. We have two parties. We have a Republican Party that wants to maintain our borders, sometimes. Maintain what passes for sovereignty, sometimes. And defend your freedoms, sometimes. And then you have a Democrat Party who wants open borders and unlimited taxpayer-funded welfare. For the world. Unsustainable. We are simply going to, I, we are going to use the Citizen Kelly show, G-Law. I'm sorry. <laughs> if you thought your hero's journey was, was done, it, it's just begun. Okay? Homer, Homer's Iliad and, and Odyssey has nothing on us. Make no mistake about it. We are going to use the Citizen Kelly show through 2020 to educate my fellow citizens about election fraud. Every single person, every single uh, American citizen is going to have to understand what exactly the Democrats are doing with election fraud. And they're going to have to be willing to put their foot down and say, no, you're not going to steal another election. And that includes in the city of Chicago. That includes in the state of Illinois. You're not going to steal Democrats. You're not going to steal another election. Okay? Because understand, if they steal 2020, it's game over. Then there's only one other option. Then there's only one other option. And I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. Trust me. But I'm telling you, if John F. Kennedy, not exactly a a wild-eyed extremist, John F. Kennedy had a quote. If peaceful revolution is impossible, violent revolution is inevitable. Am I advocating violent revolution? No, I'm trying to prevent a violent revolution. Get your Citizen Kelly Revolution t-shirt at citizenkelly.com. <laughs> Seriously, you know, I've always like tried to stay away from the word revolution because I always thought it sounded a little pretentious. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Now, especially, and I also, I also thought that it was a mistake to talk about like revolution because these completely worthless idiots we're always talking about the, you know, the, the revolution. You know what I mean? They didn't know. They don't even know the definition of the word. But you know what? I am officially selling the Citizen Kelly Revolution t-shirts at citizenkelly.com right now. Get one. Okay? We should also do like Citizen Kelly, like Citizen Revolution, Citizen Revolt, Citizen Uprising, Citizen, you know, any variation of that. Thank God we got a, a trademark on the word citizen. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Not that the Chinese robots are going to respect that. No. You know what I mean? going to have to fight those Chinese robots and once again, nail. And once again, I would like to apologize to the 50 billion Chinese communists that I have oppressed. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, you know, I, I have to, I just have to say that, you know, to the billions and billions and billions of, uh, of uh, people around the of my of the billions and billions and billions of minorities around the world that I have oppressed, I am so I I feel ashamed. I feel ashamed. God help us. Okay, it's on. I said it. I was struggling at the top of the show because I didn't really know how to say it. Twenty twenty. It's the last election cycle 
in American history. And then the only other option is violent revolution. I don't want that for my fellow citizens. I should say I don't want it for the Democrats. But I don't want that for anybody. When we come back, we're going to go to work on how to make sure that we have a free and fair election in 2020 and we keep American sovereignty and freedom. We'll be back with more Citizen Kelly after this. 